Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Flowers and this is our July monthly favourites. Every month on this channel I do a little wrap up for you of my favourite books, decks, internet and other bits and pieces and life stuff uh, that have just been bringing me lots of joy, sparking joy for the month. We have quite a bit of stuff to get through this month so let's start with the books. As per usual I try to narrow it down to my three favourites of the month. That's actually been quite difficult this month because I've read a lot of really good books. The first one I want to mention, it might not even fit in the screen, no? Let's go back, there we go, <laughs> is When We Say Black Lives Matter by Maxine Bonnie Clark. This is a sweet children's picture book that is both written and illustrated by one of my favourite Australian authors, Maxine Bonnie Clark. And in it, she basically just tries to, I don't know, explain what Black Lives Matter means, why it's important, um, and to sort of contextualise um, the movement for young children. So it has a pretty big task um, of sort of tackling with honesty the importance and significance of and, and the necessity for a rally cry like Black Lives Matter, for a movement like Black Lives Matter to young children um, without, you know, sort of glossing over any of the facts and the difficulties while also being sensitive to where children are at developmentally and emotionally. The artwork is bold and very colourful. It's fairly simplistic so it allows the message of the book to stand centre stage and it's beautiful. The next book I want to talk about is The Roomy Prescription by Melody Moisey. This is the book that the Blossom Book Club, my book club that I host over on my Patreon, are reading this month. I just finished it last night and I loved this book so much and I have heard from a lot of other people who are participating that they are also loving this book. Essentially this is by Melody Moisey who is an Iranian American Muslim. Um, she's an author and activist um, and she also has bipolar and has had like quite a difficult experience with that. And after one particular episode of quite severe mania in which she ends up hospitalized and put in solitary like a really awful experience Melody decides to sort of um, connect with her father through um, his love of Rumi. Um, he is Iranian, he speaks Farsi, and he has always, ever since she can remember, sort of like used Rumi's poetry and sort of like reciting them as like messages and lessons for the family. Um, and so she decides to sort of like dive into that with him. And this book is called The Rumi Prescription because she goes through, each chapter essentially is a different diagnosis or thing that she's struggled with. So for example, one of them is wanting, one of them is haste, one's depression, one's anxiety, another is anger, etc. And for each, she offers the prescription that Rumi and her father have offered her. So I loved exploring Rumi and her like reconnecting to her ancestral roots and her heritage and culture um, and finding so much powerful meaning and healing through that journey. I also just adored the relationship she had with her father. Like that was just, it was moving. So yeah, I cannot wait to talk to everybody next week uh, in our live chat about how everybody else found this book. I know a lot of you have loved it. I absolutely did too. We are also trying to arrange to have a live chat with Melody um, for the book club. Um, I'm hoping that'll happen sometimes next month, uh, which would be amazing. And I think in almost any other month, uh, the Rumi prescription would have topped the month for my favorite book. But I did also read Amrita by Banana Yoshimoto. This was sent to me via uh, the Wild Book Box, which is a secondhand subscription service that I am subscribed to. And I do vlog reading these books. So that will be up hopefully in a few weeks. It's taking a bit longer because this is the shortest of the books that I was sent this month. And I think it is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. We follow a main character who has had a head injury um, and her family has experienced some um, tragedy uh, kind of prior to the book starting, including the uh, one of the sisters passing away, the father passing away. It is a bit magical realism. There's like a bit of telepathy happening. There's some ghosts and stuff. But again, they're not the focus. It really is a very mundane story. But what I loved so much about it is just the way that it's written. Like the hyper focus on things like street food and sunsets is just, it was, I don't know, it hit all the right spots for me. And I think this is one of my favorite books of all time. I absolutely loved it. I've read a lot of really great books this month. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing my reading wrap up in a few days when the month actually does end. Uh, so if you're a bookish nerdish type and you'd like to hear about all of the books that I've read in the month of July, um, go ahead and subscribe to my second channel, my booktube channel, uh, and be on the lookout for that video when it goes up. Now let's talk about the decks. And today I have two Oracle and two Tarot to share with you. Firstly, I've been playing around with the life design cards by um, Lisa McLaughlin a little bit lately. 
This is one of my all time old favorite Oracle decks and I still I love it. I know she has recently, I think kind of republished this, um, but with some updated artwork and some new cards and stuff. I don't really know a whole lot about the new edition. I am still madly in love with my old edition. So I won't be getting the new one, I don't think. This deck is just so beautiful. And I just find it's quite unique in a lot of the sort of messages that it brings forward. Like the card titles, you can see this, the sort of card titles that we don't see in every other Oracle deck. And I just, I think it's such a beautiful deck and I've had such great readings with it. I tend to just do small readings, whether it's three cards or a one card pull. That is typically how I use Oracle. And I do do that with these cards too. This deck is based on the principles of permaculture. Um, and you can certainly see how there's like this eco philosophy brought into the images and into the messages. Um, but I don't think you have to know a whole lot about that to enjoy this deck. I certainly don't. This deck always helps me sort of find or establish connections in the world around me. It sort of helps me see things in a new way. Um, and I know all divination does that, but this deck does it in a, just a different way and I can't quite put my finger on it. I guess it's just about like acknowledging the connections that already exist. Um, even the ones that aren't all that obvious. And maybe it's also because I've been reading the Rumi prescription and she and Rumi are all about the interconnection of everything, including with whatever we see as divinity. Um, and so I don't know, I think this deck has been sort of sitting and fitting with that really well this month for me. Another deck that I've been playing around with is the Australian Wildflower Reading Cards by Cheryl and Darcy. This is another old favorite. You've seen this on my channel before. Um, and another Rockpool deck. I really love Rockpool as a publisher. I think they do great stuff, especially for Australian artists and creators. Um, and for the price of their stuff, I think they're pretty, pretty damn good quality. I've just been loving these Australian Wildflower Cards just as daily pulls. Not every day, but just sort of like when I feel like I need a little bit of a pep talk or a pick me up. We've been back in lockdown in Melbourne. I know Sydney is going through it at the moment. I love you, Sydney. Please stay safe. In Melbourne, this is our fifth round of lockdown and I'm not against lockdown. I fully support the health measures. That doesn't make it any easier emotionally. Um, and especially when it means like we're just not getting outside as much. Like I can't go for my big four, five, six hour walks every weekend with mum or with my friend Claire. I've been finding this deck sort of like not filling that hole entirely for me, but just giving me that sort of that feeling of connecting with Australian plant life, which is something that I love to do. It's just so colorful and vibrant. And I think especially given that we're now in winter here, it's just something that I'm sort of like feeling like I want more of in my life. So I'm really enjoying going to this deck every now and then. Gosh, every single one of these decks actually is an old favorite. This one is very much an old, old favorite of mine. The Liminal Tarot by Penelope Klein. Gosh, I've had this deck for so long. I do have the beautiful sort of like 200 limited edition set. This was the first tarot deck I sort of like splashed on, like that I saved up for and spent big bucks on. And I've never once regretted it because I still think this is one of the most beautiful tarot decks I've ever owned. The artwork here is inspired by the artwork of Lady Frida Harris, the artist of the Thoth Tarot. However, the system remains pretty much true to the Rider Waite Smith, which is something that I've always loved about this deck in particular because I, really like Lady Frida Harris's artwork, but I do not like the Thoth Tarot and I don't like Alistair Crowley. That's just a personal thing. I don't, I don't get good vibes from that deck for me personally. So I'm very much a Rider Waite Smith person, but I've always loved the sort of like the, the geometry and the texture and the sort of like light and line work in Lady Frida Harris's artwork. And so this deck, like sort of bringing those two things together, I just, I adore it. This deck also has some of my favorite cards of all time, like depictions. I just, especially the sixes, we spoke about that in my collection video where I just, I love some of these depictions. And it's just for me, such an easy deck to read with. It has this sort of like soothing, calming, but also like fantastical, magical element to it that I just really appreciate. I just find it really appealing. And so I've done just a couple of small spreads and small readings with this deck this month and I've had a really good time doing so. And then this is, I suppose, a spoiler for an upcoming video. Uh, the deck I chose to do the next Keep or Cull on is the Fountain Tower. So this is the deck I have been spending by far the most amount of time with this month. I'm sort of, I'd say like three quarters of the way through that video. So hopefully you'll be seeing that in another week or two. I won't talk about it too much because I am going to go into a lot of detail, like actually working with the deck in that video. Um, so you got to see it in action and me talking about it a lot more in that video, but it's a beautiful deck. I've always loved the, the color palette and the art style in this deck. I think it's one of the most beautiful decks that has been printed in recent times, um, both in terms of like, just like the literal like quality of the cardstock and the box and all of that sort of stuff 
but then also just the art itself I think is stunning. Now for some other tarot bits and sort of piggybacking off what I was just talking about with the fountain tarot, uh, my new Keeple Cull series, I started, uh, if you didn't catch it, I'll leave a link to it in the description box and the cards above. So in the last video, I spent two or three weeks with the uh, Tarot de Saint Croix and I did like five readings with that. And I walked you through the card meanings and my interpretations and just spoke about the artwork, showed you a bit of the guidebook. And I had so much fun making that video. Um, it's sort of, yeah, it's like a reading vlog, which I've enjoyed making over on my other channel, um, but it's tarot focused. It's also encouraging me to work with my decks a little bit more. And I am, I'm already finding that I'm enjoying tarot, I think more than I have in a year or two, to be honest. So it's working out well for me. And I just, I also wanted to say thank you to all of you who gave me such great feedback on that video. It was a bit of an experiment. It was a little bit different. So just to hear that you guys enjoyed it um, and found it valuable and interesting and yeah, I don't know, it just made me really happy. So that is definitely a favorite from the month. And if you enjoyed it, do keep a lookout for the Fountain Tarot Keep or Cull, which will be coming up soon. And then something else tarot related that I really enjoyed this month is something I haven't participated in, but it was the hashtag cliche tarot reader um, tag that's going around at the moment that was started by Astro Lady Tarot. I originally saw it on James Feeney's channel, uh, but I've watched a few responses now. Um, I saw Judy Reads Cards, who's one of my old favorite channels. She did a video. Will from Atypical Tarot did a great one. Um, I can see that Laura from Aquamarine 18 and um, Julie from Pico Bro Rose have done it too. I haven't watched those ones yet, but I don't know. I've really been enjoying watching those videos. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a response because I feel like I haven't read enough tarot lately in the last like year or two to like be able to say that I film many of the cliches and I don't want to just sit on a video being like I'm not like other girls the whole video and if I can find like a playlist or something I'll leave a link to that in the description box below otherwise I'll leave a link to a few of my favorites so far. I also wanted to mention briefly just to let you know uh, that there is a new really cool tarot that is being released and is currently available for pre-order. Eris Elizabeth who is a content creator here on YouTube um, she did used to have a blog about chaos magic. Um, she talks a lot on her channel about witchcraft and magic and tarot. And she is an artist and she's been creating a tarot deck, which is now ready to go and ready for pre-order. It's called the Penumbra Tarot. I'm not sure when I'll be getting this deck because as we've established in the last few videos, I have a lot of decks that I haven't been using and I am trying to reduce my collection size. This one has definitely tempted me and I'm sure I will get it at some point. I'm just not sure when. But for those of you who are into pre-orders and you want to get a little bit of a discount, I think Ethany is currently offering a small discount for people who pre-order early. So definitely check that out in the um, description box below if it tickles your fancy at all, because it looks beautiful. Congratulations, Eris. Another thing TarotTube related is that Samantha Menzo just hit 10K, which I mean, I don't really keep track of how many subscribers everybody has, but um, Sammy is one of my favorite channels and has been for a long time. And I know that that's something she's been really working towards and working really hard for. On top of being a wonderful tarot reader and an important part of the TarotTube community, and a co-host of one of the most serious and important podcasts I've ever listened to, speaking of which, with Skylar Hayes. Sammy's also an astrologer, so if that sounds like the sort of stuff you're interested in, uh, I'll leave a link to Sammy's uh, YouTube channel below. Now for a few other bits and pieces that I've been enjoying lately. And then I also wanted to share with you a video by Ashley from Bookish Realm, who did a video called Book Piracy and the Role of Libraries, a discussion. Um, Ashley is a librarian in the States, um, and she sort of talks about a conversation that has been happening in the bookish community about um, like the legitimacy or like the morality around piracy and where libraries sort of fit into that conversation. And I think it's a great video that stands on its own, but I think it's also relevant to a lot of discussions that have been happening in like our community and community sort of like adjacent to ours anyway. Ashley's channel is like reliably great, um, but this video in particular I wanted to share this month with you. Also totally random, but I have to mention my new reading chair. I posted a picture of it on Instagram the day that it arrived because I'm just obsessed. It's sort of like a custom made chase. Uh, so it's like a little bit of a different sort of size to like a standard chase, a little bit narrower so it fits in this room better. It's pressed up against the window so I get a beautiful view, I get all the sunlight and it's just, it's perfect. It's so cozy. I get to put my feet up. I love it. I just had to mention that because it's, it, it probably is my absolute favorite thing of the month. I'm obsessed with it and I live there now. The only time I move is when I'm filming these videos. That's it. Although I know some of you will be worried that we've gotten rid of that like red chair that I used to sit in for all my videos and that I know has been in the background of a few of my videos lately. Don't worry, still got that. It's in the living room now though. Because you know, I need a comfortable spot to read in every room of the house. And then the last thing that I'll talk about is the Patreon. Uh, not to spruik it or anything, but more just to 
say that it has been one of my favorite things picking this back up and starting to read together and I am so looking forward to our first live chat back so thank you to everybody over there on the Patreon who has been supporting me and my content thank you for your support and a big extra special thank you goes to Livia, Lynette Brown and Laurie. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me and catching up on some of the stuff that I've been loving lately as always I would love to hear in the comments below some of the things that you've really been enjoying this month whether it's books or tarot or videos whatever it may be leave them in the comments and I will talk to you soon in the next video. Until then, so much love. Bye.